Hi, this is section 3.4, optimization story problems. And so what we want to do is look at some physical models and figure out how we can optimize them, which means maximize or minimize those equations that we do build. So our procedure, we want to choose variables and or draw a label figure. Write the primary equation. Primary equation is the thing that you want to have maximized or minimized. Rewrite only with one variable on each side. This may require a secondary equation. Find the domain. Take the derivative, find critical numbers, make a number line, etc., to figure out if it is a max or a min. Example number one. We have a box with no lid made from 48 square centimeters of materials. So that is the surface area. If the box must have a square base, find the dimensions that produce a maximum volume. Explain the meaning of the answer in a complete sentence. So if I want to look at, first of all, what we call our primary equation. Primary equation is the thing that we want to maximize. It tells me right here, maximize the volume. So the volume is going to be equal to the base side squared times some height. So if this is my B, it says that it's a square base, and then I have my H. This is the thing I want to optimize. If I want to get this in one variable, I have to use this fact right here from the surface area to get this all in terms of one of these variables here. So my secondary equation is going to be for surface area. So if I take the area of the bottom of my figure, that would be b squared. That would be surface area. Then I take each side. Notice that this is just b times h. That's the volume that I'm, I'm sorry, the area that I'm looking at each one of those faces. I have four faces going around. So that would be my equation that I do have. They tell us that it's 48 square centimeters. So I have this fact right here. Now I can go ahead and solve for my h. So I get 48 minus b squared is equal to 4bh. And so I can divide both sides by 4b. And there's my h. That is my equation now that I can plug in for h into here so that I have only volume in terms of one variable. So I substitute out h and put that in, and then I can simplify this a little bit. I can cancel the b's and do some other things. So if I take b squared times this little piece right here, this looks like 12 over b, so I'm left with 12b when I multiply that. b squared times this piece, well, that will give me b to the fourth over 4b, and I get this piece here. My domain is going to be based on this premise right here. b can't be greater than the square root of 48, otherwise I'm running out of surface area. I don't have really a figure anymore. So my domain is going to be 0 and less than square root of 48. Now we want to optimize this equation. So we're going to take the derivative, which would be v prime which would be 12 minus 3 fourths b squared. That is the derivative. And I want to take that, and I need to set that equal to 0 in order to find the critical values. So if I solve, then I get b is equal to plus or minus 4. However, this is all going to be positive quantities because we're doing, dealing with geometry. And so if I do a number line and check if this is a relative maximum, I'm going to use 4. And using this derivative, if I plug in a number that's less than 4, for instance, 2, I'm going to get a positive value. And if I plug in something bigger, 5, I'm going to get a negative value. So then I would have a relative maximum. This problem asks for the dimension. So if I have b is equal to 4, that does mean that my height then, based upon my equivalency, and if I plug it into this thing, I'm going to get h being 2. So my dimensions are going to be 4 by 4 by 2. And if we put the units on that, that would be centimeters. 
So that would be your dimensions of your open-ended box. That is optimization. Write the primary equation, find the secondary equation and get everything in terms of one variable, and then go ahead and do our calculus. Number two is a more generic type problem, so let's read it and see what this says. The sum of two non-negative numbers is 30. Find both numbers if the sum of twice the first plus the square of the second is a maximum. So I have two numbers. Let's call them x and y. So what do I want to optimize? So my primary equation is the thing that I do want to optimize and it says that the sum of twice the first plus the square of the second is a maximum. So this sum is going to be twice the first plus the square of the second. So that's my equation right there. My secondary equation relates the x and y together so I can get one in terms of the other. That would be from right here, x plus y is equal to 30. So I can solve for y right away. This is 30 minus x. So now I can put that into here. So taking this and plugging it in now to our primary equation, we're going to get this and then we're going to multiply this out and take the derivative. And so my sum would be equal to x squared minus 58x plus 900. And my domain is going to be between 0 and 30. Can't be over 30 because we have the sum to 30. Take the derivative. Try this on your own. So we're going to get a value of x is equal to 29 when I solve this out. Now if I set up my number line, and this is kind of key for this problem, I do have a 0 and then I do have 29 and then I go up to 30. 30 is my endpoint value. 0 is an endpoint value. So when I look at 29 and I use this derivative to figure out if it's positive or negative, if I plug in something in here, I'm going to get S prime being negative. And then here, S prime will be positive. So what does this mean for me? Well, this tells me that I have a relative minimum at 29. It's not going to be a relative max, it's going to be a relative minimum. So that answers this question down here for part B, honestly. So then the first number is going to be 29 and the second number is going to be 1. That would satisfy us for that. Now, what's the answer though for this? Well, you have to check your endpoints and that's a problem because it's an absolute situation that we do deal with. Doesn't happen too often, but with the absolute, you'd have to check your endpoints. So you'd have to go with x equal to 0 and x equal to 30 as your two selections. So if I take 0 and plug it back in to my original equation for x, so I'm going over here and I'm going to plug in, or this one, and I'm going to plug in 0 for x and I'm going to get 900. That is the sum. If I plug in S of 30 and plug it back into this equation here, we end up getting 60. So my absolute maximum on this interval is going to be equal to 900 at X equal to 0. So when X is equal to 0 and Y is equal to 30, we have our maximum value of 900. And then here's our minimum down here. And if I plug this into my sum formula, I'm going to get 59. So there's my minimum sum, which is less than that 60, so that's good to know. All right, so that's playing with numbers and trying to optimize those. This shows the pitfalls sometimes when we do have to check our endpoints for absolute max and absolute min as well. All right, this is section 3.4. I hope you enjoyed this. Have a great day.